okay guys uh, right now I'm starting uh, the next issue of profit maximization as I told you that the profit uh, maximization is the sole objective of the firm and uh, but uh, how a firm maximizes its profits uh, it is uh, very interesting to see t interesting to learn <coughs> profit maximization is a process where the profits are managed to be maximum in available pool of resource that has f that, that the firm has it means that the uh, uh, either the firm is a large firm with having a millions of turnout or it is a small firm with little amount of money and resources every firm has some uh, pool of resources per, day, per unit of time but according to the available resources firms tries to maximize its profits <coughs> maximum profit does not concern uh, to the uh, positive maximum number um, Profits are profit can be maximum in positives, profit can be maximum in negatives, and profit uh, can be maximum at zero, because maximum profit is not a number. Ma maximum profit is not uh, uh, any kind of absolute value, but the maximum profit is some kind of uh, uh, positioning of a firm. So uh, to have a very clear idea about the maximum profit, we has to we have to uh, learn something. Uh, into detail uh, regarding this issue. <coughs> so far as profit maximization process is concerned, I have said that the way the profits are managed to be maximum in the available pool of resource and to understand the process of profit maximization one has to understand the behavior of the cost and revenue detail because we know that the, uh, the profit uh, formula uh, is uh, having um, uh, total uh, revenue minus total cost so if we want to learn about maximizing profit we has we have to uh, uh, learn in detail about the uh, total revenue and the total cost i am starting with the cost <coughs> and uh, theory of cost uh, because i know that uh, i told you that the profit is having a, a definition like the difference between the total revenue and uh, the total cost uh, so that's why we have to look into detail about uh, the both of them individually I'm starting with the cost concept and after completing this cost concept I will explain the revenue concept as well. So after having this in detail discussion about the cost concepts and revenue concepts we will be able to understand the profit maximization function. So here I'm starting with the cost theory, theory of cost and starting with the cost uh, function obviously whenever we are talking about the economic behavior we are actually dealing with an, with an economic f uh, uh, function. Uh, just like a demand function, just like a production function, I've uh, already told about you <coughs> about this to you. And uh, uh, cost function, so far as the cost function is func uh, is concerned, uh, cost is the function of quantity produced. C is uh, equal to f of q. It means that the cost depends upon the quantity produced. If uh, it 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 is sub it is. Uh, 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 it is seen that uh, it is uh, we can say that it is very common to understand that the cost uh, will obviously be depending upon the quantity produced how much the quantity we are producing and that would determine how much we are incurring the cost uh, normal thinking is that that uh, the s if uh, we are producing more and more quantity it will carry more and more cost because uh, every each individual uh, additional unit Will, would carry uh, the amount of resources and the amount of resources obviously would carry uh, the, the cost in terms of uh, dollars or rupees. So it is a common thinking that by increasing the quantity produced the cost will also be increased but not uh, uh, this is not uh, that much simple we have to look into detail about the cost. So cost, uh, if I have uh, taken the start uh, with the function of quantity, uh, I can uh, I can say that the cost is uh, the summation of two costs, that is total fixed cost and total variable cost. Uh, guys, uh, uh, I am uh, delivering you this cost concept into microeconomic concept. And uh, these are particular kind of specific concepts in microeconomics about cost and it has no, nothing to do about the uh, investment th at the macro level and investment in the industrial structure that is a, that is something very different uh, we are studying in the macro e economics and any other sciences 
This, these caste concept is strictly and specifically to the microeconomic caste concept of any individual one unit of firm which is producing some amount of output and for those that amount of output it is incurring some uh, caste. So this is being in, uh, uh, explained in this microeconomic uh, uh, theory. So caste, uh, I have uh, told you that the caste is summation of the total fixed caste and total variable caste. So what is uh, the total fixed caste and total variable caste? Let's see. Total fixed caste is a caste uh, that does not change with the level of output. As I told you in the previous slide that the caste is the function of uh, quantity. So it is common thinking that the uh, quantity if it is changing that will put effect on the caste. This uh, function explain this kind of relationship. Uh, with the variation, with the, vari with, the, with the change in the quantity, then obviously the caste would uh, get affected and uh, if quantities increase or decrease, directly effect uh, uh, on the caste uh, is ensured. Uh, no, uh, so to, to look into how the quantity increasing, uh, increasing quantity of output uh, will affect the caste. So that's why uh, with the uh, reference to this kind of uh, caste function, the two caste are being explained, the total fixed caste and total variable caste you know, in detail. The total fixed cast is that kind of cast which does not change the level of output. It means that the total fixed cast remains the same for the constant or the constant whether the zero or an infinite amount of output. It means that the uh, this kind of cast does not related with the amount of output. Now, if you are thinking uh, we if we are, we are not uh, producing any if we are producing amount of uh, uh, output. So how this cast cannot be changed? So uh, let me tell you some. Uh, let me tell you something. Some examples, uh, such like uh, building construction. If you have uh, constructed a building for your factory, so all the uh, construction cast would be included in the fix because it doesn't uh, has to do some has to do about uh, uh, pr uh, with the production. Because uh, you have established the building, you have sta you have installed and you have uh, installed the equipment. You have installed many of fixed uh, assets into that, um, and so far you have not started your production. It means that these kind of cast are not related to the, to the uh, uh, production level. And uh, along with this, uh, if uh, I have uh, uh, appointed some employees at on on permanent basis. So permanent basis employee, it means that I have to uh, pay them the wages and salaries, uh, either whether they, they are, they are uh, producing amount uh, for production or not. If they are uh, producing lesser amount or greater amount and larger amount, I have to pay them uh, in fixed kind of uh, salary. So this is also included, this may, this may also include in the uh, fixed cars. Similarly, uh, all kind of rents, the rents also uh, uh, do not uh, related with the <coughs> uh, amount of production. Uh, if you are producing uh, more output, if you are producing less output, you have to pay the rent on the uh, constant basis. Uh, it means that the with the change of output level, these rents cannot be changed. It is it, it might be the rent of the building, it might be the rent of the um, uh, landline bills, it might be rent of the electricity meters all kind of rents come into this kind of category because rents cannot change, rents are not changed by the level of output. Either you are producing, you have to pay the rent, if either you are not producing, you have to pay the rents. Similarly, the interest if you are taking uh, money from the banks, you have to pay the interest on that and obviously that interest is also is not related to the output level. You are producing, uh, either you are producing commodities or not producing commodities, you have to pay the interest rate on some fixed kind of amount. So these kind of casts uh, are uh, counted in the fixed cast. I similarly, the equipment or machinery installed in the factory. You have installed factory for, let's suppose for $10,000 or ten, uh, 1 lakh rupee. So 1 lakh rupee machine is being installed. Either you take production or not from that machinery, but this expense, uh, this cost has been incurred. In, uh, so this cannot be changed. This is not, this would not be changed with the increase or decrease of the output. So all these kind of uh, casts are counted as fixed cast which do not related uh, with the level of output. Fixed casts are not related to the level of production. Fixed cast occurs because in the 
uh, occurs because in the short run there is at least one factor that cannot be changed guys uh, there is a uh, concept of short run cost and long run cost uh, in economics uh, we mostly focusing on the short run cost short run is that kind of period period where your some resources are fixed they do not change with the change of output scale uh, just like i said that uh, the building that is being established once uh, the amount of uh, uh, permanent salaries uh, so if you are having a 10 uh, employees uh, to whom you are giving permanent salaries and 10 employees remains there either they are producing lesser amount or higher amount of production they, uh, their number of labor uh, does not change so this is kind of fixed resources or you have installed machinery and that machinery become fixed uh, for some uh, time period and you take uh, full advantage of that machinery until unless you start the second one so uh, before starting the second machinery you, you put your all energies on the first machinery and that machinery become fixed uh, assets and until unless this fixed asset remains there the fixed uh, uh, cost would be there so if in, in the long run in the long run there is there is nothing is fixed because in the long run you uh, normally change the building you 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 expand your building you expand your uh, labor uh, uh, amount you are you expanding your the machinery and equipment amount in the long run there is nothing is fixed uh, short run is that kind of period where some resources are fixed so uh, here we are uh, interested into learning about the short run cost so uh, sh in short run cost uh, there is a fixed cost in long runs in long run there would no uh, not be a fixed cost at all uh, this is a, a fixed cost schedule you can see in the in, in this table that the output is being increased uh, you are producing one uh, amount of uh, quantity scale you come from one to two amount of quantity scale to come up to the three four five six but uh, the fixed cost remain uh, same that 60 60 is uh, uh, comprising all those kind of expenses which I've told you that the building cost is there then the machinery equipment cost is there uh, the permanent staff salaries there all kinds of friends in this because these are th these kind of cost you have to uh, uh, pay you have to incur in any condition either you are producing one amount of output if you are producing 11 amount of output you have to pay all these things regularly this table lists the total fixed cost at each level of output all at all output the total fixed cost uh, let's say in this example is dollar uh, sixty this means that no matter how much uh, or little the firm produces the firm must always pay sixty dollars in fixed cost even if no output is produced so it is very uh, uh, common concept if you have any kind of question you can ask me anytime uh, variable cost the second portion of the total cost is variable cost and variable cost is that cost which changes with the level of output uh, if the car is not uh, uh, driven at all the variable cost will be zero it means that if you are not taking if you're not uh, uh, using your resources uh, there will be no cost as well uh, uh, the variable cost uh, uh, the more miles you the car is driven uh, the greater is the variable cost this is example of the car but the main thing is uh, it is related to the production if you are producing lesser amount of production you will be carrying lesser variable cost if you are uh, making uh, uh, larger amount of the production you will be uh, bearing the larger amount of cost that is cost that is called a variable cost variable cost uh, uh, by uh, it is it is explained by the name it varies with the level of output because I have already told you the cost is a function of quantity and if quantity is increasing then the cost is set to be increased all the way that is all uh, that is at all uh, the variable cost so in this ca the variable cost uh, include the labor is not the permanent labor but the daily wages labor daily wages labor you have to pay according to it, according to the work if they if they work uh, for uh, one hour you have to pay for one hour if you if they work for the uh, five hours you have to pay for the five hours raw material if you are producing uh, no item so you have uh, no need of raw material there is no cost of the raw material if you are producing one uh, amount of uh, output uh, you will be needing one uh, uh, raw material according to the one amount of output and 
so on and so forth if you are producing hundreds uh, amount of production you will be needing the uh, raw material for the hundred amount of production and that is varying with the level of production such uh, in this in the same with the capital uh, all kind of uh, machinery and equipment comes into it uh, and the money also uh, for the lesser amount you will be having lesser capital and for the higher amount of production you will be having a uh, larger amount of capital and energy obviously you are using electricity you are using fuel you are using transportation and uh, with the uh, little amount of production you will be needing little of uh, energy you will be need needing uh, little of uh, electricity gas and water and uh, petrol and fuel or uh, etc etc as more input are purchased and output is increased variable cost rises so this is uh, what we call a variable cost and you will be uh, this will be explained in this kind of table you see that the if, if, if there is no production there will be no uh, variable cost but when the production is increasing the variable cost is also increasing because as uh, m more as you are get producing the output the more uh, of resources raw material and fuel and transportation you are bearing you are uh, you are bringing bearing in total variable cost are the, those costs that are that vary with the level of output produced as the level of output goes up more resources are needed to be a variable cost uh, uh, production arises uh, <coughs> so as uh, in, in the start i've told you there's a total of cost is the sum of the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost now this is the total uh, fixed cost uh, dollar uh, 60 uh, from the zero output to the uh, 11 output so far and uh, that remains the fix and uh, the variable cost you see that you saw that the, the with the increase of the output this variable cost is also increasing by the addition or by the adding of these two cars we get the total cost 60 plus 0 becomes 60 60 plus 45 becomes 105 60 plus 60 uh, becomes 120 and uh, producing third quantity or three quantity uh, the cost fixed cost is 60 variable cost is 72 we uh, by adding these two we get the 132 amount of dollar so in the same way we can uh, draw the total cost schedule uh, by this uh, this table shows the total cost concept the total fixed cost and the total variable cost are shown from those cost we obtain total cost by adding the total fixed cost and the total variable cost at each level of output guys this is the uh, cost behavior the total cost behavior uh, as we saw that um, if we are producing zero output one two three or up to eleven or twelve output the dollar sixty remains fixed for the uh, uh, all amount of output so this is uh, this function is total fixed cost function but the total variable cost is, is zero at the level of zero if you see this uh, if the level of output is zero the total variable cost is zero and then by increasing of the level of output the variable cost is also increasing so this uh, uh, um, this is the level of output this is uh, cost and you see that the total variable cost increasing and it goes increasing and uh, uh, and remain increasing of in the later uh, figures higher figures and uh, this is the total cost and total cost i said that the total cost become uh, by the adding of the fixed cost and variable cost uh, so if i'm uh, adding this fixed 60 rupees to each uh, variable cost to figure so we get the total cost and we have we see that this difference between these two costs is the fixed cost i am put i am adding this 60 into zero so i am having total variable cost into total cost total variable cost uh, when it is being added with this 60 of total fixed cost we get the total cost so the, the difference between these two costs and the fixed cost that remain fixed this is uh, rupees of dollar 60 uh, as in our example so okay guys uh, right now I am starting uh, the next issue of profit maximization as I told you that the profit uh, maximization is the sole objective of the firm and uh, but uh, how a firm maximizes its profits uh, it is uh, very interesting to see t interesting to learn <coughs> Profit maximization is a process where the profits are managed to be maximum in a variable pool of resource that has f that, that the firm has. It means that the uh, uh, either the firm is a large firm with having a millions of turnout, or it is a small firm 
with little amount of money and resources every firm has some uh, pool of resources per, day, per unit of time but according to the available resources firm tries to maximize its profits <coughs> maximum profit does not concern uh, to the uh, positive maximum number um, profits are profit can be maximum in positives profit can be maximum in negatives and profit uh, can be maximum at zero because maximum profit is not a number ma maximum profit is not uh, uh, any kind of absolute value but the maximum profit is some kind of uh, uh, positioning of a firm so uh, to have a very clear idea about the maximum profit we has to we have to uh, learn something uh, into detail uh, regarding these issue <coughs> So far as profit maximization process is concerned, I have said that the way the profits are managed to be maximum in the available pool of resource. And to understand the process of profit maximization, one has to understand the behavior of the cost in revenue detail. Because we know that the, the profit uh, formula uh, is uh, having um, uh, total uh, revenue minus total cost. So if we want to learn about maximizing profit, we, has, we have to uh, learn in detail about the uh, total revenue and the total cost. I am starting with the cost <coughs> and uh, theory of cost uh, because I know that uh, I told you that the profit is having a, a definition like the difference between the total revenue and uh, the total cost. Uh, so that is why we have to look into detail about uh, the both of them individually. I am starting with the cost concept and after completing this cost concept I will explain the revenue concept as well. So after having this in detail discussion about the cost concepts and revenue concepts, we will be able to understand the profit maximization function. So here I am starting with the cost theory, theory of cost and starting with the cost uh, function. Obviously whenever we are talking about the economic behavior, we are actually dealing with, a, with an economic uh, uh, function, uh, just like a demand function, just like a production function, I have uh, already told about you. <coughs> about this to you and uh, uh, cost function so far as the cost function is func uh, is concerned uh, cost is the function of quantity produced c is uh, equal to f of q it means that the cost depends upon the quantity produced if uh, it, it it is sub it is uh, uh, it is seen that uh, it is uh, we can say that it is very common to understand that the cost uh, will obviously be depending upon the quantity produced, how much the quantity we are producing and that would determine how much we are incurring the cost. Uh, normal thinking is that that uh, the s if uh, we are producing more and more quantity, it will carry more and more cost because uh, every each individual uh, additional unit will would carry uh, the amount of resources and the amount of resources obviously would carry. Uh, the the cost in terms of uh, dollars or rupees. So, it is a common thinking that by increasing the quantity produced, the cost will also be increased. But, not uh, uh, this is not uh, that much simple. We have to look into detail about the cost. So, cost. Uh, if I've uh, taken the start uh, with the function of quantity, uh, I can. Uh, mm, I can say that the cost is uh, the summation of two costs that is total fixed cost and total variable cost. Uh, guys, uh, uh, I am uh, de delivering you this cost concept into microeconomic concept and uh, these are particular kind of specific concepts in microeconomics about cost and it has no nothing to do about the uh, investment th at the macro level and investment in the industrial structure that is, a that is something very different uh, we are studying in the macroeconomics e and any other sciences. This these cost concept is strictly and specifically to the microeconomic cost concept of any individual one unit of firm, which is producing some amount of output, and for those that amount of output, it is incurring some uh, cost. So this is being in, uh, uh, explained in this microeconomic uh, uh, theory. So cost, uh, I have uh, told you that the cost is summation of the total fixed cost and total variable cost. So what is uh, the total fixed cost and total variable cost let's see total fixed cost is a cost uh, that does not change with the level of output as i told you in the previous slide that the cost is the function of uh, quantity 
So, it is common thinking that the uh, quantity if it is changing that will put effect on the cast. This uh, function explain this kind of relationship uh, with the variation with the, vari with the with the change in the quantity then obviously the cast would uh, get affected and uh, if quantities increase or decrease directly effect uh, uh, on the cast uh, is ensured you know, so to, to look into how the quantity increasing uh, increasing quantity of output uh, will affect the cast so that's why uh, with the uh, reference to this kind of uh, cast function the two cast have been explained the total fixed cast and total variable cast you know, in detail the total fixed cast is that kind of cast which does not change the level of output it means that the total fixed cast remains the same for the constant or the constant whether the zero or an infinite amount of output it means that the uh, this kind of cast does not related with the amount of output now if you are thinking uh, we if we are, we are not uh, producing any if we are producing amount of uh, uh, output so how this cast cannot be changed so uh, let me tell you some uh, let me tell you something some examples uh, such like uh, building construction if you have uh, constructed a building for your factory so all the uh, construction cost would be included in the fix because it doesn't uh, has to do some has to do about uh, uh, pro, uh, with the production because uh, you have established the building you have sta you have installed and you have uh, installed the equipment you have installed many of fixed uh, assets into that um, and so far you have not started your production it means that these kind of cost are not related to, to the uh, uh, mm, mm, production level and uh, along with this uh, if uh, I have uh, uh, appointed some employees at on, on permanent basis so permanent basis employee it means that I have to uh, pay them the wages and salaries uh, either whether they, they are, they are uh, producing amount uh, for production or not if they are uh, producing lesser amount or greater amount and larger amount I have to pay them uh, in fixed kind of uh, salary so this is also included this may, this may also included in the uh, fixed cost similarly uh, all kind of rents the rents also uh, uh, do not uh, related with the <coughs> uh, amount of production uh, if you are producing uh, more output if you are producing less output you have to pay the rent on the uh, constant basis uh, it means that the with the change of output level these rents cannot be changed it is it, it might be the rent of the building it might be the rent of the um, uh, landline bills it might be rent of the electricity meters all kind of rents come into this kind of category because rents cannot change rents are not changed by the level of output either you are producing you have to pay the rent if either you are not producing you have to pay the rents similarly the interest if you are taking uh, money from the banks you have to pay the interest on that and obviously that interest is also is not related to the output level you are producing uh, either you are producing commodities or not producing commodity you have to pay the interest rate on some fixed kind of amount so these kind of costs uh, are uh, accounted in the fixed cost I similarly the equipment or machinery installed in the factory you have installed factory for let's suppose for ten thousand dollar or ten uh, one lakh rupee so one lakh rupee machine is being installed either you take production or not from that machinery but this expense uh, this cost have been incurred and uh, so this cannot be changed this is not this would not be changed with the increase or decrease of the output so all these kind of uh, costs are counted as fixed cost which do not related uh, with the level of output fixed costs are not related to the level of production fixed cost occurs because in the uh, occurs because in the short term there is at least one factor that cannot be changed guys uh, there is a uh, concept of short term cost and long term cost uh, in economics uh, we mostly focusing on the short term cost short term is that kind of period period where your some resources are fixed they do not change with the change of output scale uh, just like i said that uh, the building that is being established once uh, the amount of uh, permanent salaries uh, so if you are having a 10 
uh, employees uh, to whom you are giving permanent salary and 10 employees remains there, either they are producing lesser amount or higher amount of production, and they, uh, their number of labor uh, does not change. So this is kind of fixed resources. Or you have installed machinery and that machinery become fixed uh, for some uh, time period and you take uh, full advantage of that machinery until unless you start the second one. So uh, before starting the second machinery, you, you put your all energies on the first machinery and that machinery become fixed uh, assets and until unless this fixed asset remains there, the fixed uh, uh, cost would be there. So if in, in the long run, in the long run there is, there is nothing is fixed because in the long run you uh, normally change the building, you, 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 you expand your building, you expand your uh, labor uh, amount, you are you expanding your the machinery and equipment amount. In the long run there is nothing is fixed. Uh, short run is that kind of period where some resources are fixed. So uh, here we are uh, interested into learning about the short run cost. So, uh, sh in short run cost, uh, there is a fixed cost. In long run, in long run, there would no uh, not be a fixed cost at all. Uh, this is uh, a fixed cost schedule. You can see in the in, in this table that the output is being increased. Uh, you are producing one um, amount of uh, quantity scale. You come from one to two amount of quantity scale. You come up to the three. 4, 5, 6, but uh, the fixed cost remain uh, same. That 60. 60 is uh, uh, comprising all those kind of expenses which I have told you that the building cost is there, then the machinery equipment cost is there, uh, the permanent staff salary is there, all kinds of rents in this. Because these are th these kind of cost you have to uh, uh, pay, you have to incur in any condition. Either you are producing one amount of output, if you are producing 11 amount of output, you have to pay all these things regularly. This table lists the total fixed cost at each level of output all at all output the total fixed cost uh, let's say in this example is dollar sixty. this means that no matter how much uh, or little the firm produces the firm must always pay sixty dollars in fixed cost even if no output is produced. So it is very uh, uh, common concept if you have any kind of question you can ask me anytime. Uh, variable cost, the second portion of the total cost is variable cost and variable cost is those ca that cost which changes with the level of output. Uh, if the car is not uh, uh, driven at all, the variable cost will be zero. It means that if you are not taking, if you are not uh, uh, using your resources, uh, there will be no cost as well. Uh, uh, the variable cost, uh, uh, the more miles you the car is driven, uh, the greater is the variable cost. This is example of the car, but the main thing is uh, it is related to the production. If you are producing lesser amount of production, you will be carrying lesser variable cost. If you are uh, making uh, uh, larger amount of the production, you will be uh, bearing the larger amount of cost. That is cost. That is called a variable cost. Variable cost uh, uh, by uh, it is it is explained by the name it varies with the level of output because I have already told you the cost is a function of quantity and if quantity is increasing then the cost is set to be increased all the way that is all uh, that is at all uh, the variable cost. So in this ca the variable cost uh, include the labor is not the permanent labor but the daily wages labor daily wages labor you have to pay according to it, according to the work if they if they work uh, for uh, one hour you have to pay for one hour if you if they work for the uh, five hours you have to pay for the five hours. Raw material if you are producing uh, no item so you have uh, no need of raw material. There is no cost of the raw material. If you are producing one uh, amount of uh, output uh, you will be needing one uh, 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 raw material according to the one amount of output and so on and so forth. If you are producing hundreds uh, amount of production you will be needing the uh, raw material for the hundred amount of production and that is varying with the level of production. Such uh, in, this, in the same way the capital, uh, all kind of uh, machinery and equipment comes into it uh, and the money also. Uh, for the lesser amount you will be having lesser capital and for the higher amount of production you will be having a uh, larger amount of capital. And energy obviously you are using electricity, you are using fuel, you are using transportation and uh, with the uh, little amount of production you will be needing little of uh, energy 
you will be need, needing uh, little of uh, electricity, gas and water and uh, petrol and fuel or etc etc. As more input are purchased and output is increased variable cost prices. So this is uh, what we call a variable cost and you will be explain, uh, this will be explained in this kind of table. You see that the if, if, if there is no production there will be no uh, variable cost but when the production is increasing the variable cost is also increasing because as uh, more as you are get producing the output the more uh, of resources raw material and fuel and transportation you are bearing you are uh, you are bringing bearing in total variable cost are the, those costs that are that vary with the level of output produced as the level of output goes up more resources are needed to the variable cost uh, uh, production arises uh, <coughs> so as uh, in, in the start i have told you that the total of cost is the sum of the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost now this is the total uh, fixed cost uh, dollar uh, 60 uh, from the zero output to the uh, 11 output so far and uh, that remains a fix and uh, the variable cost you see that you saw that the, the with the increase of the output this variable cost is also increasing by the addition or by the adding of these two costs we get the total cost 60 plus 0 becomes 60 60 plus 45 becomes 105 60 plus 60 uh, becomes 120 and uh, producing third quantity or three quantity uh, the cost fixed cost is 60 variable cost is 72 we uh, by adding these two we get the 132 amount of dollar so in the same way we can uh, draw the total cost schedule uh, by this uh, this table shows the total cost concept the total fixed cost and the total variable cost are shown from those costs we obtain total cost by adding the total fixed cost and the total variable cost at each level of output guys this is the uh, cost behavior the total cost behavior uh, as we saw that um, if we are producing zero output one two three or up to eleven or twelve output the dollar sixty remains fixed for the uh, uh, all amount of output. So this is uh, this function is total fixed cost function. But the total variable cost is is zero at the level of zero. If you see this, uh, if the level of output is zero, the total variable cost is zero. And then by increasing of the level of output, the variable cost is also increasing. So this uh, uh, this level of output, this is uh, cost. And you see that the total variable cost increasing and it goes increasing and uh, uh, and remain increasing of in the later uh, figures higher figures and uh, this is the total cost and total cost I said that the total cost become uh, by the adding of the fixed cost and variable cost uh, so if I'm uh, adding this fixed 60 rupees to each uh, variable cost to figure so we get the total cost and we have we see that this difference between these two costs is the fixed cost. I am put. I am adding this 60 into zero, so I am having total variable cost into total cost. Total variable cost, uh, when it is being added with this 60 of total fixed cost, we get the total cost. So th the difference between these two costs is the fixed cost that remain fixed. This is uh, rupees of dollar 60, uh, as in our example. 